Hi, this is a service video for Leonard Valve TM1520B LFDT. The first thing you want to do when you go in is what we call a click test. You turn that handle back and forth. You should hear the internals click and click in. If you do that, you know the internal parts are moving free and everything's working. You just need to set it up. If you go in and you don't hear anything when you turn the handle back and forth, you're going to need to take it apart and clean it. So the first step is to turn the water off. You can either do that with the serviceable check stops up here with a straight screwdriver, or it's much easier if you have ball valves. So this one will just turn the ball valves off. Then make sure you get the two inlets and the outlet ball valve. Once your ball valves are off, then what we do is loosen the six screws. You don't want to take them out. You just loosen them. In doing so, you can then free up the cover. Hear that? It'll drip out, the water will come out, but you'll make sure there's no pressure left on the system. Once you've done that, then you can take the six screws out. Once you take the six screws out, you can take the whole cover assembly off, handle and all. Don't lose the cover gasket. All right, so then you're looking at the coil and the ball. A lot of times if this has mineral buildup or you can just drop it in some uh, rid lime, lime away, CLR, you know, let the bubbles uh, go until they stop, maybe 15, 20 minutes. You don't really need to do overnight. Once you do that, then we'll start looking at the port sleeve and thimble. There's the thimble. That's the key part sliding back and forth. All right. Notice the slot and the thimble is facing up. So you loosen the lock nut by tapping up. Once you get it loose, then you thread it out all the way. So that'll come in towards the base. Then you're going to tap down on the lock nut itself. That loosens it. Then you're going to thread that nut into the base all the way. The nut threads into the base. Once you do that, then the port sleeve and thimble slide right out. All right, that's the key, is to clean this off. No sandpaper or anything, just some CLR, red line, wipe it off with a clean rag. Same thing with the thimble, clean it off, wipe it up. Then you want to put these back together, no grease, dry, and then you'll see how it slides nice back and forth. Again, when you reinstall, thimble pin facing up with the slot facing out. Slide it back in. Again, you slide the port sleeve in to the left, slide the lock nut out towards you, and that locks the port sleeve in. So this time with the port sleeve nut, you're going to tap up on the top, just snug it up. Once that's snug, then you got to bring the lock nut down, so that locks up against the base to the right. So a few taps, that locks that in. Once you do that, just confirm that the port sleeve and thimble are moving nice and free. You lean the thimble a little bit forward. So you lean that thimble forward because the ball is going to slide right into that socket. Make sure you put your gasket back on. If you have trouble with the gasket, sometimes a little grease will hold it in place. So you just slide the ball onto the thimble. Line up your holes. And you put your screws in. Once your six screws are in loose, you tighten them just like you would on a, on a tire, lug nuts. Opposite sides, snug it up, jump around, opposite, snug, snug, and snug. After you're done, you want a quick test to make sure the thimble and the ball are engaged. You go back to that quick test and you can hear that all the parts are moving inside. Now we move to the small valve. You want to make sure, again, the outlet ball valve is closed so no water comes back on you. The inlet ball valves are closed. Same thing, you loosen the four cover screws. Don't take them all the way out. Once the four cover screws are loose, you pull on the cover a little bit, drain out the water, make sure there's no pressure, and then you can fully take the four screws out. Once the four screws are out, you can pull the whole cover assembly off, handle and all. Okay. The key in here is gonna be the port sleeve and thimble like we talked about before. You want that moving nice and free. 
Okay, in the coil, a lot of times you can just throw this again in a bucket of CLR, lime away, rid lime for 10, 15 minutes till the bubbling stops. And then you should be good. Make sure that one part is moving free. That's the key. If for some reason you can't clean up the coil or it's damaged or any kind and you want to replace it with a kit, you just take the screw out of the handle. Take the handle off. This slides out. And the kit comes with a complete thermostatic assembly. Again, it's pretty straightforward. You just slide it back in. And put the handle right back on. Once you want to reinstall, double check your gaskets in the groove. A little bit of an angle helps slide it in. Then you can install your four cover screws. Once completed, you do another quick click test, make sure all the parts are moving, they're going well. Then we can move on to the check stops. So you have two check stops on each valve. So we'll first we'll take just a large adjustable. Loosen the check on it. While you're here, you can also loosen the check cap, screen cap. Okay, so the bonnet comes off. Complete cap. And then you have a spring, yellow if it's a high low. Then you have the lower check stop. So you clean off this edge, make sure the gasket's in good shape. If not, you need to replace it with a kit. And the cap, there's a gasket. Let's check, make sure there's no tears or rips. If so, replace. Put the gasket back in place. Make sure your lower stop is in. Spring goes on top. If on the cap you have a leak coming out of the bonnet, here, it's just an O-ring on the stem. Straight screwdriver, upper stem comes out through the bottom, you change that o-ring, slide it right back in with a little grease, and that should seal it up. Then install on top of the cap. Then you got the screen cap. Again, it's a similar cap with a nice gasket. Take out the screen, clean it up, check it. Maybe some red lime again or CLR. Slide it back in. Cap back on, making sure the gasket is good. Once you get them both back on, again, just tighten up snug, not too tight, and adjustable. Onto the smaller valve check stops, very similar. Take an adjustable wrench, loosen the cap. Once the cap is loose, Thread it out. Similar, you got a gasket, you get the same upper stem, so if there's a leak here, same process, you slide the stem out, change the o-ring. Check for the gasket, check for the lower stem, make sure everything's clean. Once you clean everything up, slide it back in with the spring behind it. Cap goes right on top. Install the cap back on. Again, once you get up tight, just a little snug. Once you've done the large valve and the small valve and all the checks, then we can reintroduce water. You always want to introduce cold water first as a safety in case there's a leak. Open the cold ball valve slowly, make sure there's no leaks. Once you've done that, then you can open the hot ball valve. 
Once you've done that, then you can open the outlet on both. Then you get water running. Once you have water going out, then you can do the proper setup procedure and set the valves and set the system.